But uh, I have to ask you, what's your take on Bruce Willis saying that Die Hard isn't a Christmas film? Because that's insane. Oh, it's absolutely a Christmas film. I can I can prove it. I have a um I can't I can't go get it and hold it up for you now, but um I assume you have a website or a blog or something that goes along with your show. Yeah, yeah. You have something, all right. I'll send you a chart. I made a chart that proves incontestably with graphics that it's a Christmas movie. Now, a lot of people, every Christmas, it goes around. They, I, I get called for interviews. Um, um, a television station comes here with a camera. Um, is it a Christmas movie? And there's always people. So one guy always says, it can't be a Christmas movie because it came out in July. And which I respond, I send them, if it's on Twitter, I send them the actual poster for Miracle on 34th Street, which is the Uber Christmas movie, you know, with the little, you know, the black and white movie where it, this, the department for Santa Claus turns out to really be Santa Claus. You, you know the film, right? Oh, yeah. It's, all right. So uh, young Natalie Wood is the little girl. That movie came out in June. So that argument. And by the way, what's really funny is because it came out in June, and, the, and, the, and this is like 1949, I think, they're saying, gee, with Christmas movies coming out in June, how do we promote this? It'd be funny if we promote it as a Christmas movie. So they, if you see the original coming attractions, which are on internet, it, it's shown as a romantic comedy. There's no, you don't know it's a Christmas movie at all from the coming attraction. So people went into seeing it's a romantic comedy and were surprised it took place at Christmas. So that's the number one argument. Doesn't have to come out of Christmas, but um, it's undoubtedly a Christmas movie. And uh, I could go, I could go, I could go through my in, entire list right now of why it's a Christmas movie. But uh, maybe you want to see the chart instead. I wish there was a way to send you the chart. I could probably email you the chart now. Anyway, I'll do it when we get off. But it's uh, a Christmas movie, of course. And uh, for the record, I also consider Die Hard Two to be a Christmas film. Yeah, well, thank you, but I think not so much as the first one. I mean, the first one, I can tell you, like, uh, uh, here, here, here's what I would compare it to. Now, Miracle on 34th Street is certainly a, uh, the, 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 one of the great Christmas movies, but another one that's incontestably a Christmas movie is White Christmas. Mm. Right? You know, it beats a uh, musical Big Crosby, Danny Kay. So, does the movie take place during the Christmas holiday? Die Hard takes place entirely during the Christmas holiday. White Christmas... Only the first scene and the last scene take place on Christmas. The rest of the movie, it, the movie covers a five or six year period. It starts at the end of World War II, and then it picks up in the 1950s. So we only have two scenes at Christmas versus the whole movie. Die Hard wins. Point, Die Hard. The setting of the movie is a Christmas party. Die Hard is entirely a Christmas party, the whole movie. White Christmas, only the last scene is a Christmas party. Advantage, Die Hard. How many Christmas songs are in the movie? Die Hard has four. Let It Snow, Winter Wonderland, Christmas and Hollis, that's the one they play in the limousine, and Jingle Bells. White Christmas only has two. White Christmas, which is sung twice, and Snow. And Snow is arguably just a winter song, but we'll give it a pass. It's a Christmas song. So now again, advantage, Die Hard. The party venue becomes threatened. What is the threat of the party movie in Die Hard? terrorists what is the threat of the party venue in white christmas foreclosure so you have like terrorists bankers advantage die hard there's a broadcaster with a hidden agenda in die hard it's dick thornburg right he's yeah. gonna but he'll bring everybody down right the broadcaster with a hidden agenda in white christmas is johnny grant he's going to help them have a surprise party not quite the same hidden agenda. The German ringleader in Die Hard is Hans Gruber. The German ringleader in White Christmas is Hitler. Okay, baby advantage, White Christmas. Government incompetence. The government incompetence that leads to mis mischief in Die Hard is the FBI overreacts. In White Christmas, it's the Pentagon fires General Waverly, which is the precipitates the plot. The body count. This is where I lose people. Die Hard, 23 people get killed. In White Christmas, 26,128 people are killed in the Battle of the Bulge, which is the opening of the scene. The opening <laughs> is the Battle of the Bulge, the, the, the uh, German counter. Now, this is where someone says, well, you can't count them. They're all killed off camera. You know, only, you know, only uh, Daddy K is injured, like, from, uh, uh, from uh, shrapnel. 
So I go, okay, is, is Alice dead and die hard? Well, of course. He's killed off camera. So there goes that argument. Uh, finally, what is the gift of the Magi like selfless scrap, sacrifice? You, you know that story, the gift of the Magi. The uh, Americans are, okay, uh, she cuts her beautiful, there, there's a poor couple, she cuts her long, beautiful hair to buy him a chain for his watch. And he sells his watch to buy her a comb for her hair. The gift of the beautiful sacrifice. What is the beautiful sacrifice one does for a loved one in Die Hard? Bruce Willis runs barefoot over broken glass. What is the gift of the Magi-like selfless sacrifice in White Christmas? Danny Kaye gives his first-class ticket to, to Vera Allen. It just doesn't compare. So I think it's incontestable. Die Hard wins on every point of Christmas movie.